हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन कोर्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल मेजरमेंट एंड मेट्रोलॉजी माई सेल्फ अभिषेक त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वी आर डिस्कसिंग फोर्स टॉर्क प्रेशर स्ट्रेन एंड टेम्परेचर मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एज वेल एज द मेजरिंग मैथड्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टेड विद द कंसेप्ट ऑफ द टॉर्क वॉट यू आर डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द टॉर्क वॉट डू मीन बाई टॉर्क हाउ द टॉर्क विल बी एप्लीकेबल इन द मैकेनिकल इंडस्ट्रीज then what is the shaft power the concept of the shaft power then we have discussed the brief classification of the torque measuring techniques or we can say the power shaft power measuring techniques we have classified the mechanic uh, we have classified the torque measuring or the shaft powering techniques shaft power measuring techniques in the three different categories the first one that is the absorption type techniques the second one that is the transmission type and the third one that is the driving type techniques all the techniques are totally depends on the construction of the dynamometers so we have designed the different different dynamometers on the basis of the different different techniques in the first one absorption type dynamometer we have designed the rope brake brownie brake hydraulic and the eddy current dynamometer in the second one transmission type dynamometer we have designed the basic belt transmission then the epicyclic gear train dynamometer and the third one in the driving type dynamometer we have designed the electric cradle dynamometer then we have started with the basic concept of the prony brake dynamometer how the prony brake dynamometer will be helpful in the mechanical industries for the measurement of the power till this particular topic we have discussed in the previous lecture now we are going to start or we can say we are going to further discuss the different different dynamometers like the rope brake dynamometer hydraulic dynamometer eddy current dynamometer and how it will work in the mechanical industries so so let us start with the concept of the rope brake dynamometer the concept rope brake dynamometer as the name suggest we are using some sort of the rope the rope will apply the brake and the instrument is known as a dynamometer the same concept we have discussed in the prony brake dynamometer we are repeating almost same concept with a different aspect the figure shows the rope brake dynamometer first of all let us understand the constructional details of the rope brake dynamometer we have the spring balance or we can say we have the spring scale then the hook is attached with the spring scale the rope is attached with the particular dynamometer remember this the rope will move like this it will directly cover the wheel first after covering the wheel then rope will again cross and it will attach with the hook the hook is there and below the hook we are providing some sort of the weight this is the basic concept of the rope brake dynamometer in manual of the dynamometer we are providing some sort of the wooden blocks over the rope brake to increase the frictional resistance we are providing some sort of the wooden blocks as well this is the driving wheel or we can say the pulley and inside the driving wheel we are attached with the driving shaft or we can say the shaft on which of which the power is to be measured suppose in the very first condition the wheel is not attached or we can say the shaft is not attached then there might some chance that the wheel will start rotating as a redundant link so to avoid such short of the redundant link we are providing some sort of the dead weight over here the dead weight that is a w let's say w it shows the dead weight to maintain the proper positioning also the weight of this particular dead weight let's say dw then the hook then the rope the wooden blocks the weight of this hook it all shows on the spring scale it means in the ideal condition the spring scale itself shows some sort of the reading let's say s1 s1 is the basic reading which is available at the end of the spring scale which shows the dead weight reading or which shows the ideal reading which is available if the system is not in use if the system is not in the operation we have to provide some sort of the cooling water arrangement over here the cooling water arrangement is useful for the cooling the particular dynamometer because as we have already discussed in the earlier dynamometer that once you are start increasing the absorption type dynamometer it will simply generate the friction and the friction will directly convert it into the heat it means you are indirectly you are generating the heat only and if you are using the rope and you are using the wooden blocks then it is uh, very much necessary to make a system cool down so to 
maintain the temperature you are using the cooling water arrangement the cooling water is useful for uh, rem uh, the cooling water is useful for maintaining the temperature of the system with the predefined standard range so we are using the cooling water as a basic system to use the cool to use to cool down the our ideal system now we are going to start our basic concept once the shaft has been attached it will start rotating in the one direction let's say this is the direction of the rotation of the shaft once it will start rotating it will try to skid over the rope and the wooden blocks it will try to skid over the rope and the wooden blocks and the rope and the wooden blocks have a tendency to resist the motion to resist the motion so we can say that if the motion of the shaft is in the clockwise direction then we can say that the resistance generated due to the rope and the wooden block will be in the anti clockwise direction if this one be the clockwise direction then now if the weight is not there then there is a very easy chance that the uh, shaft with high speed will directly skid the rope and it will start moving along the rope the rope will be steady it will be slip out and the shaft will be moving properly but then you are start to increase the weight you have started increasing the weight one by one we have started increasing the weight one by one as the weight will be started increasing then the whole structure of the rope will start pulling down we know that this is the position of the rope the rope will turn the particular wheel and then it will be goes down so once it will start moving down then the direct effect of the tension will be generated over the top end of the hook we know rope is made up of the some material and the material is incompressible material inextensible material then if this is in intangible inextensible material then it is not going to be extended then if the rope is not extending itself then it will start generating the frictional the frictional resistance so by increasing the particular value of the weight the frictional resistance has been generated the resistance will be generated over the wheel the wheel will be start decreasing or we can say the wheel will be start losing its speed the speed has been reduced drastically and once we are increasing the certain amount of the weight we are supposed to achieve that the speed of the shaft will tends to zero and after the certain weight it will be zero once the speed of the shaft will become zero we can say that the wheel will automatically stop down and whatever the resistance generated whatever the reaction generated inside the wheel we are simply not down those particular reaction and by multiplying it with the radius of the wheel then we can easily calculate the torque or we can say the shaft power generated inside the wheel which is attached to the wheel once the speed will be zero we are supposed to find some sort of the value let's say s2 then what we are using to find the total force applied over it we are simply doing s2 minus s1 because s1 that is the dead weight condition which is not calculated once you are measuring the power once you are start to measure the shaft power so this is the basic case of the rope brake dynamometer the figure shows the basic structure of the rope brake dynamometer which we are using in the academic institutes the particular rope has been extended the particular rope has been extended it is attached with the one spring scale or we can say one spring and on the opposite side we are using the dead weight different different dead weights are provided over here and the rope will be turned through the particular wheel once the wheel will be started moving let's say in the particular direction once it will achieve some sort of the speed we are in start to increase the weight over here and as we are increasing the weight the speed of the wheel be wheel will be reduced uh, step by step and uh, once in a time it will be reduced to the zero and once it will be reduced to zero we are simply calculating the weight which is applied over the end of the hook and we are simply calculating the torque and we are simply calculating the rotational power or we can say the shaft power which is available at the end of the engine shaft so this is the basic concept of measurement of the power the rope brake dynamometer is highly useful for the measurement of the engine shaft power in the laboratory if we are supposed to check or if we are supposed to find the power available at the end of the engine of the four stroke four cylinder two stroke four cylinder engine then we are using some sort of the rope brake dynamometer it is widely used in the automobile industries for the measurement of the power